Happy Easter, everybody, from Highball Advisors. Welcome, everybody. Have a happy Easter. Uh, today, instead of doing railroad retirement, I'm going to do a whiteboard on Easter and uh, I don't know, a historical case for the resurrection of Jesus, right? It's Easter. I said I'm going to try something do, new for Easter, so I'm going to actually whiteboard the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We'll see if I can do it. It's kind of a big ask, but we'll, we'll have fun with it. So I actually saw this. It may, you know, it gets you thinking, right? It's an uh, interesting case for the historical evidence of the resur resurrection of Jesus, right? It's not faith-based. It's more of historical evidence uh, base. All right, so obviously we know there was an individual named Jesus, right? Uh, son of, uh, born in Nazareth, right? That's documented. That's what they call a given, okay? So what we have to uh, start with is, did he die by crucifixion? All right, and we can look at the Gospels and the Bible, and yeah, he died by uh, crucifixion, but we want to look at uh, non-Christian sources. So here's a couple. Here is uh, Josephus, uh, is Jewish historian. Tacitus is a Roman historian. Uh, Lucian is a Greek satirist, okay? Uh, this fellow, Mara Bar Cyprian, was actually uh, writing to his son in prison and mentions the crucifixion. And even the Talmud, which is a um, Jewish ancient writings, also mention the crucifixion. Uh, so I won't get into that too much. But it's, it's um, and they're, you know, they're all relevant in that time. And uh, so when you look at Christianity, it's really a historical religion, right? It's not, uh, you know, once upon a time or any of that. They actually point to certain times uh, of in the calendar when things happen. So that's, that's the crucifixion, right? Those are non-Christian sor sources referencing the crucifixion, all right? But we're trying to figure out if there was a resurrection, but it has to all start with the crucifixion, all right? So the resurrection happens as, as it goes, right? He appears three days later to uh, the disciples, right, up in the room, as they say. So what do they do with it? They, they claim it, right? So Jesus comes, talks to them, they believe it, they claim it. So how do they claim it? They claimed it through uh, Paul, and I'll get to Paul in a second. How else? Oral tradition, right? Very important. You have 95, 97% of the people are illiterate, so everything's done through oral tradition, right? I'll tell him, tell her, tell him, and it goes around. They did it by creeds. Creeds are very important. These are things that you stand for, right? So those were very important. You know, I believe that type of thing in creeds. It's also written, okay? Um, which is kind of interesting, written in the Gospels and the early fathers, just as a way of history. Um, so they were, they were, I think the earliest one was uh, like uh, 30 years after the death of Christ. Don't quote me on that, but I, I feel like that. But just to give you an example, like if you ever hear of like Alexander the Great, so that was written 350 years after he died. And even Buddha was 600 years after he died. So these these writings were very interesting, right? So they claim that, that's important. And then the other thing is they believed it. So if you really believe something, right? So, but that's great believing, but they all died. <laughs> they were all martyred for it with the exception of John. So, I mean, they were just ravaging early Christians as you know, right? So, you know, that's tough to, tough to go on a fake there. So that kind of gets you to thinking about, boy, they must really believe that if they're all willing to die. And, you know, obviously not pretty deaths either, stoning and things like that. It wasn't, you know, uh, any of that. So then um, I think the conversion of Paul is very interesting too. You can look at that one, that conversion story. Saul of Tor uh, Tarsus very, uh, comes from a very prominent family. They move down to Jerusalem, becomes uh, really one of the top students of the lead rabbi in Jerusalem. Uh, so, you know, at that time, Okay, life is set. If you have that position, you know, you're one of the head Pharisees or going to be eventually, they're grooming you for that position. So that's a huge position. But something happened to him, right, on the way to Damascus because he's been uh, persecuting and prosecuting Christians because the religion's spreading now, right? And something, something has happened, okay? And uh, from Paul reading, you know, his letters and stuff, right, Jesus appeared to him. All right, and so he went away and had to really rethink his whole life. I mean, it, you know, I think he went away two or three years before he reemerged and put all the pieces together. But once again, 
he was will he goes all around the Mediterranean. Not only that, he could, he's getting hassled. He's getting uh, uh, you know suffering injuries. He got shipwrecked, and eventually he gets uh, beheaded in Rome. So once again, here's a guy who had everything. Something happened to him, and now he is you know nobody's more responsible for the growth of Christianity than Paul. It's probably not even close, to tell you the truth. So that's, that's very interesting. And then you look at another one. Was a family member of Jesus, James. Some people say he was a brother. Some say other fa maybe a cousin, but very well uh, inside the family of Jesus somehow. And he was a skeptic, a devout Jew, did not believe what Jesus was talking. Jesus appears to him as the story goes, and he's now a convert. Not only is he a convert, he becomes one of the ch uh, church fathers, right? Starts help building the churches along with Peter and Paul, obviously. And once again, he, he dies. He gets martyred, martyred for it. So another individual who's willing to put everything out on the line to get martyred. So the very, very powerful stuff. And then finally, the empty tomb, right? Body has to not be there, right? So what happened? So Christianity is taking off, obviously. They killed Jesus, very important to the story for the resurrection, right? They have to kill him. And as Christianity is taking off, now these people are claiming, right, uh, after the 40 days, around 45 days, uh, they're claiming that Jesus is resurrected. Jesus is resurrected. They're all saying that, all right? Well, if you're the Pharisees or the Romans, well, this isn't good news because all these people are saying this. That means he's God, right? So all they have to do is go in and get the body, bring it out, and say, here you go. And what happened was uh, they didn't do that, right? And so that was a big thing. And then, you know, nobody, nobody's denying that the tomb was empty. So the people who doubt that this happened all agree that the tomb was empty, but they might say that the body was stolen. But that's fine. The tomb is still empty. So very, very interesting. And then finally, the other last one is more of a, a period time thing, is when you're trying to, uh, I, I assume when you're trying to get this religion off the ground, you would want to go to the highest of society to get it, right? Get those people on board. You know, maybe some of the Pharisees like Nicodemus, Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee. So Jesus' first appearance was to women. And at that time, you know, women weren't really treated as they are today, you know, as a father of four daughters. I couldn't imagine it. But very low on the social ladder. So to appear to women first uh, uh, and to say, oh, this is how we're going to grow our religion is, is, is very interesting. So anyway, that's, that's the historical case for, you know, I thought it was very interesting. I, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it on this Easter you know, feel free to share the video. If you have any questions, put them in there. But we'll get back to the railroad retirement. It's not going anywhere uh, next week. All right. So uh, until next week, everybody, uh, have a happy and joyful Easter. So long, everybody. Bye.